Hello and welcome to the second of the three videos on the final project for our New Mexico history class. In this video, I'll be talking uh, kind of what I hope will be a quick and dirty overview of the list of sources. Um, so mostly, I want to just go into a little bit more detail to help you know where to find these sources that you'll need, um, kind of what the idea is behind what we're doing for this project. So. Um, you'll notice that I've scrolled to that section of the final project instructions sheet. Um, the list of sources is essentially your bibliography for the project. So once you've done your topic, you have your research question, um, that's when you'll want to start looking for any and all sources that you can find. Specifically though, once you're done, you will need to have at least one primary source, two academic secondary sources, three other secondary sources, and two social media sources. Of all of those, um, the social media sources, there's a little bit of wiggle room, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, these are the, the minimum requirements. If you have more sources, that's more than fine. Um, it's whatever will best help you answer your research questions and whatever you will think fits best in your uh, presentation that you'll create on Adobe Spark or a similar platform. So I just want to uh, kind of walk through each of these to explain what they are and how you might find them. I'll say a little bit more about how you evaluate them and how you might choose between uh, two different primary sources um, in the third installment of this video series. So um, first, as we've talked about throughout the class, the difference between primary and secondary sources in history is that primary sources were created at the time of the events. Secondary sources were created um, at a distance from the events, um, sometimes long after the events, um, but they're based on a collection of primary sources and other secondary sources. So an example of a primary source then would be a letter that was written by someone who was involved with the event. Um, it could be a newspaper report about Billy the Kid, for example, um, a newspaper report about uh, Pancho Villa from 1916 when he raided uh, Columbus. Um, it could be just correspondence between people. It could be official do uh, government documents from the time. So something like uh, government documents from the statehood period in 1912 when New Mexico finally achieved statehood. Those are all examples of primary sources. Secondary sources, again, are those that were written by uh, people like us. Um, they could be historians working in the academic field. They could be people who are just super into history, um, that have done a lot of research and are writing about the past. They have research questions of their own, and they are putting sources together to answer those questions and create a narrative about the past. That narrative that they create is a secondary source. Um, so how do you find a primary source on your topic? I'm going to open a new tab over here. And just for the sake of what we're doing, I'm going to type in primary sources on the Manhattan Project. So we'll use the Manhattan Project as our topic. The Manhattan Project is maybe a little unfair for this because um, it's so relatively recent. There are a lot of things that have been digitized about it. Um, it's one of the easier ones to find sources on. So again, you could just Google primary sources. I, I suggest starting there, um, no matter what your topic is, um, but this one has a lot. So as you scroll down, um, you'll notice that there are places like the atomicheritage.org site. That's the, the first two. Um, Atomic Archive, osti.gov, uh, Gilder Lehrman, the NSA archive that comes out of George Washington University. Um, I can just see that from the, the web address there. Um, these all are great um, digitized and transcribed um, archives of primary sources on the Manhattan Project. So these range from scientists' accounts. These range from stories they told to their families uh, living with them in Los Alamos um, to official paperwork, documents, reports, very kind of jargony scientific reports. Um, if you're doing the Manhattan Project, and let me just, as a side note, uh, point out many people do the Manhattan Project, and that's fine if you're really interested in it, you have a good research question. Just note that uh, your instructor will be reading a bunch of Manhattan Project uh, finals, um, 
And so you'll have to make it pretty good. Anyway, um, so again, you, you can choose between these. You'll want to click into them, see what's there. I'm clicking on Atomic Archive to see what it has. Um, this one, as you can see, has documents that uh, are dated, many of them. Um, their letters, like letters from Einstein to President Roosevelt are in here. Um, there's Oppenheimer's travel guidance about getting to Los Alamos. So again, it depends on what your question is. If your question has to do with the scientific side of things, there are things here for you. If it has to do with the logistics and why Los Alamos, there might be something in Oppenheimer's travel guidance. You'll have to click on those and see what is best. One other thing I want to show you is Chronicling America. Chronicling America is a Library of Congress site. So you might also want to Google Library of Congress, um, Google the National Archives, Google the New Mexico Office of the State Historian, um, as well as New Mexico State Archives to see what they have there that's digitized. Um, UNM also has, through the UNM libraries, some digital open archival materials, materials as well. Um, so those are all great places to try to look. Um, Chronicling America, I'm gonna click there. This is a repository of digitized historical newspapers that the Library of Congress has done. So many of these come from microfilm that um, is physically available at libraries around the country, um, but it's all here digitally. And so you can use the search box to search for your project terms, your topics terms, I should say. You can click advanced search to narrow down the states, the specific newspapers you might be looking at. Do note that uh, if you have a topic that is prior to 1789, this one won't be that helpful. Uh, but if you have anything beyond that from 1789 um, to 1963, as you can read there, this is an excellent source, excuse me, resource. I'm going to go back over here. So that's, that's the primary source. Um, you'll locate a primary source, and uh, that will be that once you have one you like. To find academic secondary sources, um, the keyword here is academic. I've mentioned what secondary sources are. You'll find academic sources. Um, you can click that video to see, but for our purposes, peer-reviewed journal articles, as well as books published by university presses, those are all academic sources. Um, so let me show you a couple of things relative to that. Um, you can use the CNM libraries. Um, there's a link here in the, in the uh, project instructions. That's the one I just used, obviously. Um, there's also a link to CNM libraries in, the, uh, in Blackboard at the bottom of the course menu. So you scroll down, and depending on what you want, you could do books, articles, videos. Um, those will probably be the main things that you'll be looking for for our project. Um, I'm just going to do one search because that will give you everything. And I'm going to do Manhattan Project, since that's what we're working with. It opened a new tab to do the search. From here, you'll want to refine your search a little bit. And so that's what I wanted to show you. Um, let's let this finally load. So the great thing about the CNM Libraries site is that there are quite a few ebooks that you can get access to if you want to look at um, sections of a book. Note, you won't have time to, you're not required to read entire books about your topic, but you will want to search through them to find information about your specific question. And then you can use that section of the book to uh, create your final. Um, also over here, you can, um, I'm looking over here at the uh, left-hand side of the page, you can limit your search results. If, for example, you'd rather have articles and no books, um, you can just click Article, Chapter, and you'll notice it's updating those. So now we're just looking at articles rather than um, books, and it will do the same thing to show you whether these are digitally available. Many of these are, so you can click Full Text to find those. You'll note, though, this is the Long Island Business News. Um, again, depending on what your research question is, you might not really want the Long Island Business News. Um, because this isn't, even though it's here, um, in the uh, CNM Libraries results, that's not necessarily a, uh, 
an academic article. You'll want something that's peer reviewed. So if you come over here to content type, click peer reviewed, then you can be sure that you'll only get results that are academic in nature. Um, and so here we go. Now we have uh, poetry. So this is peer reviewed. Um, it does have the full text. It might not be that helpful for your project because it's poetry. I mean, it might be. Again, it really depends on what your question is. Uh, but as we scroll down, you'll see one in a, in a journal called Confrontation. That one might be OK. Environmental Health Perspectives right here. Um, Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists for this one. Those seem a lot more useful. Uh, but again, you'll have to sift through this. And you may have to, scrolling back up, I apologize, you may have to add some result, or excuse me, some terms to your search or use the advanced search. So you could also say Los Alamos, for example, and then see what comes up. Uh, once you do that, if you go back up here like I did, you'll have to then limit your results um, depending on what you want to find. So um, you'll notice here there are only nine peer reviewed. So I'll just click that and see that narrowed it down quite a lot. Um, hopefully I'm not belaboring this too much, but um, there are a lot of great resources here for you. Something that this brings to my attention, this first one is a book review. Book reviews can be okay. They do come from peer-reviewed journals. Um, but remember, this is like a very brief, usually um, maybe three to four uh, typed out pages, reviews uh, some historian or scholar has read the book that they're talking about, that they're reviewing, and they're writing a review. It's not actually the book, if that makes sense. So um, those may or may not be helpful for your project. Um, so again, use your best judgment. Think through the implications of what different kinds of sources will get you. And ask me questions whenever you have them. Um, I want to show you one other thing. I'm going up to my uh, browser bar. I'm going to type in books.google.com. Uh, many of you may already know how to use Google Books, may already know how to use the libraries. So um, I apologize if that's something that you are already familiar with. Um, here, we could do a search for the Manhattan Project as well. That's one of the top things that comes up. And there are a lot of books, of course, on the Manhattan Project. How do you know if these are uh, peer reviewed? For our purposes, if they're published by a university press, um, they are academic. There are academic books that are not published by university presses. They're published by trade presses, but by um, authors who are big names or you know prominent historians in the field. Um, you can look into that and decide if you think the authors, you have to do a little research on the author to decide if that person has the kind of credibility and authority in the field that their work would count as academic. Um, if you have questions, you can ask me about specific uh, books that you found. I'm going to click on this first one, Women of the Manhattan Project, just to kind of show you uh, what this looks like. So when you click into one of these, it will give you a lot of information. This one is published by Temple University Press, 2003. So it's, it's um, I was going to say it's relatively current, but it's actually almost 20 years old now. Um, so that's, again, something to think about. But um, this one in particular talks about women of the Manhattan Project. So if that was your research question, if you wanted to take that angle and think about women uh, in the Manhattan Project, this is an excellent secondary source. Also note right here, it says that there is a 59-page preview. Um, that means you can read up to 59 pages of this book. Um, so I've clicked on that. And here we see a digitized version of the book quite often. Uh, you can click to which section you want to go to. So you'll have to be careful because once your 59 page preview is hit, it won't let you see any other part of the book. Um, but again, this might be enough um, for you for your work on this project in class. All you'll need is just this preview. You don't have to find a physical copy of the book. OK, so those are the academic secondary sources. I think that's the trickiest part, um, usually, as I've uh, worked with uh, different classes on this kind of a project. If you have questions about whether or not you've actually found academic sources, again, don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to, to um, chat about that with you. Um, other secondary sources, 
Um, I'm not going to walk through how to find all of those because you can find those anywhere on the internet, essentially. Um, these would be trade books that are not written by academics. Um, these would be blog posts. These would be articles um, in things like Smithsonian um, that aren't primary sources in nature. Um, as I've noted here, any non-academic sources that you use must still pass your test for credibility and relevance. Um, so you still, even if they're not peer reviewed, you want to figure out, are these good, is this good information um, that's out there on the internet and how am I judging that? Uh, this link here to Berkeley Library will help you to um, kind of think through how you might want to test for credibility. Um, but again, you want to think about whether the information is current, whether it agrees with other sources that you've found or whether it diverges a lot. Um, what kinds of sources are these authors themselves using? Are they using credible uh, peer-reviewed kinds of sources? Are they just repeating things that they've heard on the internet somewhere else? Are they using primary sources? Um, and what interpretations are they offering of that information? Is their reasoning sound? Um, all of these things help you to judge credibility. And of course, uh, as you've probably talked about in other classes, and as I kind of alluded to as I was looking through the search results for the primary sources, um, you can get a sense from um, the resource itself where it's housed, if it's at a university library or a university page, a uh, government page, those tend to be more credible. That lends some credibility. Um, sources, resources, I should say, like PBS um, are credible as well. Um, so again, all of those things to think through. Finally, before we're done, I want to mention the social media sources. Um, these could be from anything like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, the idea here is just to see if people in the social media world are talking about your topic. And if so, what are they saying about it? Are they uh, having conversations that are way off base, um, that are not based in the kinds of um, evidence that you've located in your other research? Are they um, pretty good conversations that have uh, grounding in evidence? Um, so, you know, as I've mentioned here, you might find things that are less than credible and just comment on that. Say, wow, this conversation going on here on Twitter about the Manhattan Project was really kind of crazy and off base. This is why, because of the other sources that I found, you can refer back to the sources, uh, other things that you've located to provide evidence for your critique of that social media conversation. Um, all right, so that was a lot um, in terms of finding these things. Once you've found the sources, um, all you have to do is submit a bibliography as a Word document or similar. Again, whatever word processor you, you use, um, attach that file, submit it through Blackboard. Use the citation format that you're most familiar with. So if you already use APA or MLA, please do that. Um, historians use Chicago style. If you don't know what that is, it's OK. Um, I think we're the only ones that use it. Um, if you aren't familiar with any citation format, though, please click this link um, to go to a quick guide on Chicago style. Um, I'll just click it here to open it up and show you what it looks like. But this will give you the guidelines you need to know how to format your bibliography. Um, so again, if you have books, it'll show you um, how to write the, all the information down, what the relevant information is and how to do it. Here's an example. Um, so you can scroll down depending on what you found. Um, it has um, examples for most types of sources. All right, so I hope that's helpful. Um, as always with everything, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I look forward to looking through your research work this semester. <laughs>